Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yan, and I hope you lot are doing well and welcome back to the channel and to today's video, which is of course a Chelsea news video as Chelsea have not yet played their next game. And I want to talk to you about a few things that were said in Frank Lampard's recent press conference. Chelsea chairman Bruce Buck was also talking in said press conference as Chelsea did a say no to anti-Semitism campaign. A superb thing that Chelsea are doing, but not something I'm talking about in today's video. Frank Lampard did comment on a few things like Ruben Loftus-Cheek's training and potential return, Ross Barkley's links to West Ham, Olivier Giroud's potentially imminent exit and a few more things besides. Oh yeah and Bruce Bucks came out of a little statement that got a lot of people excited, frustrated, as well as Frank Lampard being frustrated. Anyway, before we get into today's content, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel. If you've not yet done so, please do subscribe. Hit the bell notifications icon. Why not to like the video, please? All right, let's get into the content. Right, when Bruce Buck was up in the hot seat answering questions about a campaign, he did make a sort of sweeping comment, I guess, when people asked if he knew about transfers. He said something along the lines of, I know who's coming, but I'm not going to tell you, or I know, but you don't kind of thing. A little bit of a sort of wink and a nudge and a tongue in cheek moment, I suppose. And later when Frank Lampard took the seat to do the normal press conference for the upcoming game, he was quick to be like, oh, he's joking. You know he was joking. Duh, 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 duh. Forget about it. What can we speculate from that sweeping moment? Well, probably there is some talks going on behind the scenes that Bruce knows about but probably isn't directly involved in and got a bit overexcited and just wanted to say something. Frank Lampard, as an intelligent face of the club, did the right thing in squashing uh, any excitement that came out of Bruce's statements. But for me, it's undoubtable that Chelsea are in talks with players and player agents. It's just what they do. Chelsea are often keeping tabs on up to 30 players at once. So in a transfer window when they want to strengthen generally, they of course are talking to people. At the end of this video, I want to talk about my opinion on the window in general and what it would mean for Chelsea if they did not bring any significant signings in. But there's a few things to talk about just before then. Firstly, let's talk about Ross Barkley. Obviously, the last two games he had for Chelsea in the Cup and indeed the Premier League, he performed really well, offered the team quite a lot going forward and changed Chelsea's dynamic from what they've been playing recently and offered quite a lot. And um, their performance, their positive performance against Burnley had a lot to do with Ross Barkley. His performance was a bit understated, but he offered a lot and he did change the dynamic and I think Frank Lampard has recognised that. Lampard was questioned about Ross Barkley's recent links to West Ham to meet up with former Everton boss David Moyes and Frank Lampard was very quick to be like, nope, never heard of this link, he's absolutely going nowhere, I really like Ross. The only reason he's not played recently is because of a few different situations. And I think he's referring to the off-field situations here when perhaps he was doing disciplinary action. Still, Frank Lampard does really rate Ross Barkley, I think. He certainly did in pre-season, and after these two performances, I think he does rate what he brings to the side. Now, I'm going to say what I've always maintained regarding Ross Barkley. I didn't want him to go because I think he's a really good utility squad player. He can play deep, he can play in the shuttling roles, he can even play in the front three, probably. He's very strong, he can deal with the physicality, and he's quite, you know, he's got a shot on him. He's, he can finish, he can score goals. He's not amazing at anything, but he's certainly a very, very good squad player. Although I was happy for Chelsea to keep him, at the same time, I would not cry for him if he departed the club, because Chelsea would make a decent profit on him, considering they only bought him for 15 million. Full England international, uh, you know, well experienced in the Premier League, so I kind of get it. But generally, I think he's a good utility player to have around, and apparently, Frank Lampard feels exactly the same, and basically doesn't want him going anywhere. He was also questioned about Willian and his potential exit. I think Frank Lampard took it the wrong way, this particular question, and thought it was only regarding this January window, and he was like, of course, Willian's going nowhere, we need him. He's in talks with the club for a contract extension. I think the speculation is that Willian might not reach an agreement with Chelsea Football Club, and he might go in the summer, but then who knows, Chelsea might replace him with a big money signing in terms of a winger. We'll have to see what happens, but Frank Lampard, if, if he had his way, he'd probably keep him for a couple of years plus. But like Ross Barkley, he's going nowhere in January. Unlike Olivier Giroud, which he commented on as well, he was like, look, we all know about Oli, there's a good chance he'll be going in January, but that's dependent on the fact if it suits everyone, as in like Inter, Chelsea, uh, Giroud, basically everyone needs to be happy. 
and he said at the moment everyone's not so as things stand he's not going anywhere but I think he's probably alluding to as soon as that last check bot goes on the negotiations he's out the door I mean Chelsea probably see an opportunity here to make a few million quid on a player they're just not playing but they're probably reluctant to do Antonio Conte too many favours at the moment considering the lawsuits against Chelsea recently personally I think he's gone anyway Frank did have some positive news about Ruben Loftus-Cheek he said this week I can actually give you some information on him because before it was like yeah he's doing fitness training yeah we're gonna try and get him doing this but this week he said he's been playing games now this is with the under 16s and I think he said the under 18s and under 23s but I think at the moment it might just be the under 16s and the under 18s but that's what you do when you come back from an injury and you're a fully grown man you need to keep the pace up or start the pace slow to get it up to sort of first team senior squad elite fitness levels so he's playing football, apparently he's got a smile on his face again, and he's feeling good. Obviously this is massive news for Chelsea, they don't make a signing this January, at least say maybe in a month's time if Ruben Loftus-Cheek comes back into the first team. As cheesy as it sounds, as an old cliche as it is, it will feel like a new signing for Chelsea, because he was such an important and integral and promising and positive player for Chelsea last season he'll make a huge impact into the first team. So on transfers generally, Bruce Buck made that little comment. Obviously there are conversations going on behind the scenes and Frank Lampard has maintained the same stance throughout. Look, if we can strengthen, we will, but we're not gonna sort of buy for the sake of it, I think he said. Now think about it, that's sensible. Chelsea can then save money for the summer and then go all out on a player that they know will absolutely make them a lot better and probably get a better deal because it's a summer deal and not a January deal. And in terms of how Chelsea have been performing of late, they've been okay. It does look like the centre-back problem is no longer really a problem, or certainly not a huge problem. Azpilicueta is fitting in at left-back, comfortably. Sure, it's not an ideal situation, but with the emergence of Reese James on the right, they're just their back four seems like in relatively safe hands, even if it's not the positive dynamic of a forward-thinking young left-back that Chelsea will eventually won. Certainly for the moment, it kind of serves them right. We all know Chelsea are flush for midfielders and like I said, the re-emergence of Ruben Loftus-Cheek into the first team will be like a new signing in the midfield. hudson Adoy is finding form at a good time. Him and Willian are probably first choice, certainly until Pulisic comes back from injury. Pulisic will come back from injury as well. And even if Pedro never plays again or goes this January, Mason Mount can still play on the left wing, which still gives you four winger options in Mount, Pulisic, hudson Adoy, and Willian. And again, even if Olivier Giroud does go like Pedro, Chelsea do still have two striker options in Tammy Abraham and Michy Batshuayi. Now, Michy Batshuayi has been out of form of late, certainly he's wasted a lot of chances, but we know he can finish and he is an option. He's a strong option up there. So maybe with a bit of coaching, a bit of confidence, he can become a good number two again. But there is that element that if Tammy Abraham gets injured, Chelsea are in trouble. You can see why they were pushing quite hard for a second striker option to offer goals if something does happen to Tammy Abraham. Sure, if Azpilicueta gets injured, who's filling in at left back, that would be bad, but they still have two actual left backs to come in behind them in the shape of Emerson and Alonso, which sure might be disappointing in certain games in terms of dynamic, they might show frailties, but it, that's okay. You can sort of make up for that across the team. And who knows, Alonso and Emerson might have a really good game in that game. So everywhere seems okay, it really is the striker option. And we know Frank Lampard's actually played Pulisic down the middle before, so maybe he'll try that again if needs be moving forwards when Pulisic is back from injury. They've trained a bit with him down the middle, so it's an option. So all that being said, it does look like Chelsea could make it to the end of the season and then address the situation properly and then do good business. And maybe this is a good thing. They're not coming across as desperate in this window. So maybe a deal will present itself to Chelsea later on uh, in a sort of manner that, okay, you can have this player for this amount. We know you're not desperate. We know we can't wring more money out of you. Have so-and-so for X amount of money. It does beg the question though, why would Chelsea go through this length to get the ban lifted? to not sign anyone. Well, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One is to save face, to show, look, we have done nothing wrong. Maybe it's a matter of pride and also protecting themselves moving forward. So they say, look, we didn't do anything wrong. It, we were acquitted of that. So therefore don't use this against us in future dealings, maybe. Also, maybe they thought something might come up and we might be able to strengthen. And remember when they started the appeal, 
Chelsea might have been going through different problems. They've obviously settled the ship a little bit. So maybe they thought that it's there for a backup if we absolutely need to do something because we've dropped out of top four, but they haven't dropped out of top four. The ship is indeed actually settled a little bit. So maybe they're like, look, Frank, we can go all in on this player, or if you chill out and you think you can see us to the end of the season, then you can have this player and spend this amount of money. And maybe Frank Lampard's sitting down with Petr Cech, Marina Granovskaya, the whole crew, and saying, you know what? Let's chill. I think we're going to be okay. Let's get Jaden Sancho in the summer. Anyway, though, what do you guys think? Do you share the same opinion of me that Chelsea probably could navigate to the end of the season without a new signing? Or do you think it's absolutely mandatory that Chelsea do bring someone in this January as a security measure? Get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts and opinions. Also, I want to plug to you my second channel, Jan's Yard, because I did a video yesterday with Alex Goldberg, famous Chelsea fan, podcaster. We talk about the Premier League and bridging the gap to Liverpool and Manchester City. A few technical difficulties with audio, but I'd still urge you to go and check it out. You can check out the channel by clicking in the link in the top of the description. Also, follow me on social media at Football Yannick on Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, everyone. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.